Hey y'all, I'm James Wright, and welcome to my shop. It's time for another glue test. I know, another one. <laughs> Let's dive in. So if anyone's new to the channel, over the last several years, I've actually been testing a whole pile of glues over a range of different applications. We've tested now 64 different glues, and I've tested them long grain to long grain, long grain to end grain. Um, I've tested them with gap filling, I've tested them with exterior conditions, and I've made as many samples as I possibly can so we have a large sample size to choose from. There are thousands of data points now on the glue testing sheet, which I'll leave a link to the glue testing sheet down below, as well as the latest video going over all 64 glues and the results. And some of the results have been just absolutely mind-blowing. Things that you thought would work well for one thing really don't. And things that you really would never think of actually do really well. Like cheap super glue. It held up phenomenally well. But the one thing it didn't answer is how well does it hold up over the long term? All the tests so far have been within a few days of applying the block, then we put it under pressure and see how much it takes to break off. And that is all well and good, but the problem is, how long are you going to have your furniture? A few days or decades? So that's what I want to do. I have a glue test set up where I've glued together several of the test blocks and they are sitting out in my garage. And I have enough so I can do it every six months for a few years and then I can do it every single year for 30 years and we can get really good data over the long term of how well does the glue hold up. So now it is time for the first one year testing. I have the six month testing already done and so we're going to go through and, uh, and test these. Now, I'm not going to go into the actual testing procedure. It's going to be the exact same thing that I've done in the past, and I have several videos documenting that, as well as several videos where I go through it live and show an entire testing procedure. We're going to be testing each of the seven major glues ten times. And so we'll have ten data points for each glue. Now, I would like to do more, but I only have so much space in my garage for 30 years worth of storage. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing here. I'm testing seven different types of glue, and I'm choosing the ones that are the high performers of each of them. I want to see if it has a high performance right off the bat, does that mean it's going to have a high performance long term? Or are some of them going to start to taper off? Are some of them going to get stronger as the bond has more times to sit there? These are the things that I've never seen anyone testing the long term holding capacity of a glue before. So today we're going to look at six months and one year. So let me take you over to the computer and we'll dive into that. So we're here over at the computer, and this is the great, the gorgeous, the gargantuan glue chart. Uh, I have a link to this down below. It is a spreadsheet that is loaded with numbers, and it is it is one of my favorite all-time creations. Uh, it is a you really have to know how to read this to dive into it, and I have a whole other video where I go into reading this chart. I'll leave a link to that video down below. Uh, I'll, I'll brush over a few things on here, but just realize that. There is a lot of information on here hidden in this. Every one of these cells is a glue test. Every one of these cells is a data point. And there are thousands of these data points in here. And it's all broken up into the different segments. So we have long grain to long grain, which is this area here. Come down a little farther, we have long grain to end grain. We have gap filling. Uh, and then we come down a little farther and we have exterior conditions. Uh, as well as down here we have tabs for if you just want to look at the long grain to long grain and do a direct comparison the long grain to end grain, the gap filling, the exterior conditions, um, overall with everything included and in all of the spacings, overall without the exterior, um, and then just looking at high glue, because a lot of people are interested in different types of high glue and applications there. So th there's an incredible amount of information on this. So let me go back over to this. Um, the first column here is the raw data, that is how much pressure did it take on the on the, the mechanism to shear the block off. The second row is the PSI. So the block isn't actually one inch by one inch, it's one inch by three quarter. Uh, and so we'll scale the number up to PSI for just making it a little more standard. You'll notice that the PSI is a very colorful ranking and so we put in coloring in there. Red meaning it didn't do very well. Green meaning it did phenomenally well. This uh, 688, that is one of the highest numbers. Uh, 767, I think that, no, 70. Yeah, the, 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 the high numbers. Bright, bright green means phenomenal. Uh, bright, bright red means it didn't do much. <laughs> um, then in the first row, there are other colors in there, and that is about breakage. So what our intention is, is to shear the wood off 
and actually force the glue to break. So we're putting all of the pressure on the glue. But not always does that happen. If it is a clear white cell, that meant that there was a clean break. The breakage was actually the glue letting go. If there is a color on it, that means that there was some wood left over. So we can come down here to a key, and this will let us know that uh, if it's yellow, 25% of the wood was left on the surface. Orange, 50%, 75% for red. And if it's a dark red, that means that 100% of the surface had wood. It was a clean wood break. Um, and so we do kind of take that into consideration. We have all the numbers are just off of the raw data. But then over here, I have breakage estimates. How much more pressure would I put on for what came off? And so we can kind of add that into the equation a bit. And so I have numbers both with and without the um, adjusted breakage. But all the way down at the bottom of this chart, this is the section we want to look at today. This is the data over the long term. So I've picked out the glues, 3, 6, 8, 17, 23, 34, and 50. We have the hide glue, uh, the 315 hide glue. We have the homemade hide glue, which did slightly better than the others. And that was a, a first run hide glue. I actually have a video making that hide glue if you want to see that. Tight Bond 2, the good standby, um, a great performer out of the others. 2P10 Gel, which is the super glue, basically. West Systems Epoxy, DAP Wood Weld Plastic Resin, uh, which I was naming incorrectly in the last video. Sorry for that. Uh, and then Elmer's Wood Glue Max. So these were the high performers that came out of the glue test, and we wanted to see how did, well do they last over the long term. So this is the, the original data that we had earlier in the test, and then this is the six-month data, and then this is the one-year data. And so all of these charts, if you can read what's above, you can read what's in here. So we can bring this all down and look at what does this actually mean in reality. If this is the, this is the, the raw data, and this is the adjusted average data. So most of these, there wasn't a huge change. I mean, you look here, Elmer's Wood Glue Max stayed pretty flat. Um, the DAP Wood Resin improved a little bit. The West System Epoxy uh, fell off a little bit. The Tight Bond 2 was about the same, maybe a little less. The uh, Homemade High Glue improved a little bit. Uh, and the, uh, the, the 315 High Glue improved a little bit. But then we have the 2P10, the Super Glue. Whoa, that fell off in quality quickly. Um, so yeah, this is the unadjusted. This is the adjusted for breakage. Um, so you add that in and the numbers get a little bit more squishy, but not too far off. So the West system, it seemed to improve a lot and then tapered down a bit. We can average that out. It'll be interesting to see what that happens over the next few years. Uh, the DAP wood uh, plastic resin was a pretty decent increase. The Elmer's wood glue max went up a little bit. Uh, the homemade high glue went up a little bit. The, uh, the the 315 high glue went up a little bit. Tight Bond 2 stayed pretty well flat, but then here you can see the 2P10 gel just dropped off. Uh, so this is only you know three points, six months and uh, a year, but it'd be very interesting to see how this changes over the, the future. But I mean, as we're looking at right now, most of these glues are staying right about the same or doing a little bit better. So most of these so far for a year are great. However, the super glue, 2P10, hmm, not a very good long-term glue. <laughs> yeah, um, so good for fixes, maybe small pieces, but I wouldn't want to put that on load-bearing surfaces over the long term. Even though it does really, really well in the raw numbers, um, it may not do well for long-term glue usage. So, one year done, and I was actually kind of surprised to see some of these glues slightly improving in, in performance. That was, um, that was kind of interesting. I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. The super glue, I was kind of expecting it to drop off because it is a little more of a brittle connection, uh, especially with the expansion and contraction. All of this wood is out in the garage, so it's not air conditioned. It is a, open to the maximum expansion and contraction that this area can produce. So it goes down to freezing temperatures in the winter and can go up to well over 100 in the summer, um, plus the humidity swing. So it's a, it's a pretty brutal environment, but I think that's what we want for you know the worst case scenario for testing glues. So if you have questions about the whole test or the spreadsheet, definitely take a look at the old videos. They're all linked down below. Um, and I have a link to that spreadsheet down below. For those of you who are patrons or members, you had access to it about a month ago when I actually did the testing. So if you want access to some of the testing and things like that, I always release the information early to patrons and members. Just one small way I can say thank you. So please dive in 
into the spreadsheet. I love to I love to hear criticisms and thoughts and ideas on it. That really does help make things better. I try and make my tests as scientific as I possibly can. Uh, I know I should probably have a much larger sample size so I could get rid of some of the noise in the data. Um, unfortunately, I just I, I can't do that. It's just the time constraints needed for what I need on there. But it gives you at least a good idea. And hopefully over 30 years, we'll have enough data that the noise should be able to cancel out pretty clearly. So if you do have any questions or ideas or thoughts, let me know those in the comments. I read through all of them and I answer as many as I possibly can. And uh, thank you for commenting down below, hitting the subscribe and like button. Those really do help out the channel. So thank you for that. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon. Everyone scrolling over your side, members here on the channel who've clicked that join button. Uh, without you, this channel would not exist. Without you, I wouldn't be able to do testing like this. Uh, when I originally bought all this equipment to do testing, it was uh, a little over $1,000 worth of equipment. And I've been able to use that over the years because patrons allowed me to purchase it. So thank you for that. We will keep the data coming. And I've got a few other tests coming in the future. So on that note, I do want to say a huge thank you for coming today. And until next time, have a wonderful day. This is one of those subjects that really is a sticky situation. <laughs> yeah, I had to do that one. I just to keep you glued to the screen.